The first video I had made on late Roman military equipment had quite terrible audio, so I'd like to correct that here and expand on some of the data. I'm intending this, though, to be an overview, so I'm not going to go in-depth with any one piece. The arms and armor of the late Roman military can broadly be broken up into a few different types. Shafted weapons, bladed weapons, ranged equipment, body armor, helmets, and shields. I will cover everything briefly here except the shields as I am planning an in-depth video on the subject. Vegetius, a major source for the late Roman army, mentions several kinds of shafted weapons in his writings. He tells us of two forms of javelin, the spiculum and the pilum, and while it isn't certain if the two are related, or if they're completely separate weapons, it's entirely possible, and some scholars maintain that the terms refer to two different types of javelin. However, Bishop states that Vegetius lists a series of shafted weapons in his description of legionary equipment. Amongst them are the spiculum, which used to be termed pilum, with the head 9 Roman inches long on a 5.5 Roman foot shaft. Elsewhere, he says that the pilum had an iron head 9 to 12 Roman inches long, and its equivalent, the bebra, was carried in twos and threes by contemporary barbarians. We also have another main type of thrown weapon, the plumbata, otherwise known as the martio barbuli, or the martio barbuli, as it's sometimes spelled. Archaeological evidence for these weapons comes from Roman Britain, specifically dated to the 4th and 5th centuries. Most of the finds are weighted and have sharp, tapering points which back up late Roman textual sources which describe some plumbata as armor-piercing. Some of the finds are also barbed, and tests have demonstrated that either type, when thrown underhand, will easily arc high and avoid the enemy's shield, with the barbed heads then lodging in flesh and becoming difficult to remove, while the weighted plumbata could potentially have punched through armor. The swords used by the late Roman army come in several forms. The semispatha is mentioned by Vegetius, among others, and while we have yet to fully work out what this word means, the current understanding is probably that it refers to spatha that were broken and then remade, and were thus smaller. The spatha in general was the sword used by late Roman troops, and it generally falls into two main types, the straubing spatha and the loriacum spatha. The scabbards for these blades, which we know from artwork and archaeological finds, had large slides that were either rectangular or splayed at the ends, and the baldrics that they're slung from are narrow, a marked change from baldrics in the 3rd century. Additionally, we have throwing axes like the Francisca, as well as broader axes in use during this period. If the artwork can be taken as accurate, then the throwing axes saw greater use by infantry and the larger axes tended to be used by the cavalry. We do know that the hourglass style of quiver, which was in use on the steppe in this period, was utilized by Roman archers, but it isn't known precisely when this was adopted. Going along with this, we do have archaeological evidence of bone lathes from different graves, something used by Huns and Avars to strengthen their bows, but we should be careful in evaluating these as just an indicator of nomadic presence. Roman frontier security necessitated the adoption of steppe equipment in order to better protect the borders, so it is possible that late Roman archers used bows constructed in this manner, but more work needs to be done on the subject. By the time of the late empire, the famous Lorica segmentata had been largely phased out, and it was replaced by mail and scale armors. The evidence is somewhat sparse as far as body armor is concerned, at least right now, but we have uncovered copper alloy scales at a site in Trier, as well as portions of a male coat. Finds like that continue to show up all across the Roman Empire, or its former borders, anyway, and beneath this was worn a piece of equipment known as the subarmalus. As far as I'm aware, it isn't entirely known what this equipment looked like. The artwork we have available and some textual sources note that it was a padded garment, perhaps similar to a thin gambeson, that would have provided padding and extra protection for troops. The key point about late Roman helmets, since we are only covering them briefly here, is as follows. Roman helmets typically followed a Gallic or Italian design, but in the later empire, their design shifted. The Dora Europos helmet, believed to be Persian, shows its influence on later styles of helmet worn by Roman troops, 
and the two other main forms of helmet, the Ridge Helmet and the Spangen Helm, both appear to have originated outside the Empire, in the Steppe region. So, with that, we'll conclude our brief overview of late Roman military equipment. As always, if you have any questions, I will see you in the comments.